3.82 million. And the Catch 9 minimum guarantee period is 500,000. Catch 9 jackpot over a million and 71,000. The first event is for the lowest level of competition, 180 clavers. They go 5.5 photos or 1,100 meters. The purse is 600,000. My best four for the opening contest includes one Hunter's Ridge, four New Train, five Purple Wayne, and nine Reminiscing Bolo, one, four, five, and nine. What I like on top is number four Mule Train. Has the best form to recommend, having finished second on three of his last five out in second by two lengths behind Lion Talk over a thousand meters straight, second by seven lengths behind Jackson over six and a half further on the second by length behind Blue Seas over five and a half further on the third by seven lengths of Thunder Strike and Master of Hall when running at his 250 level. Last time with a 250 level beaten, well beaten too, by Justin Illusion and Prince Dominic. Now down to 180. Mule Train has absolutely nothing to complain about here, and Mule Train gets the vote. For second, going to go for number one, Hunter's Ridge, Christopher Mandini, 2019 champion jockey. He writes for Nicholas Smith, and this Hunter's Ridge has been well beaten the last couple of outings, but back down to 180, and uh, coming around the bend, not normally. Uh, he, is he uh, pointed around the bend, but uh, let's see if he can uh, put together a decent run here. The opposition is quite substandard. Number nine, Reminiscent Bolo, has won once on 22 starts. Dean Blame and a scratch on the 16th of December. Back here now, Samantha Fetcher riding for Donrell Dawes. Reminiscent Bolo should be in the thick of things throughout. And number five, Purple Wayne, has been plagued by unsoundness, but if even showing up a glimpse of his old self, he could dismiss these without most ease. Natalie Berger writes for trainer, Stedman Curtis. Make it 4, 1, 9, and 5. My order of preference are reached number one, Mule Train, to get the better off Hunter's Ridge, Reminiscent Bolo, and Purple Wayne. Haven't heard from Dr. Portenters yet, haven't heard from Marshall either, so I'm alone in the Turf Talk preview for the Saturday card. Hopefully, by the time first post, we'll get the tips from Dr. Polight and my groom, Marshall from Purple Land. And race number two is next. We start our place for eight. Minimum guarantee paid a quarter of a million, over 889,000 in the single with a bonus. And the quick four starts here as well. Minimum guarantee paid a quarter of a million, single with a bonus, over 997,000. It's a restricted allowance, 4 for native bread, 5 and up, nuns of 3, and imported 5 and up, nuns of 2. The per 750,000, they go 1,100 meters, or 5.5 furlongs. On the field of 7, my best four includes 1, Roger the Warrior, 3, Storm Macom, 4, Jupiter Man, and 6, Sugar Daddy. 1, 3, 4, 6. That's where we're going in race number two. Number six, Sugar Daddy made a recent return off a one-year break and made all the running. Led in Terry fashion, turned home seven lengths clear, came to the furlong post seven lengths clear in a six furlong contest. And faded a bit inside the final furlong, finished in front by a length and a half, over Cotter with Cathy and Gibbon the light. Would have stripped fitter. Samantha Fitcher picks up the moment between Patrick Lynch. The trip now cut back from five and a half furlongs to make that from six furlongs to five and a half furlongs. Sugar Daddy has more scope to improve than all of these. And Sugar Daddy could very well make it a quick double. Stormacom, also trained by Patrick Lynch. He's also the owner of Stormacom. Third and last, behind Marketplace and Roger the Warrior. Whipfell was in a challenging position at the quarter post, second by head, at the front post, second by half length at 49 to 1 with Prince Holder. Prince Holder maintains the mount. Plinkers have been removed. Stormacom should be in a thick of things from the world. Go Roger the Warrior, second by just a short head. At 26 to 1 in that same Marketplace event where Stormacom was served by five lengths. And remember that Stormacom. The jockey lost his whip. So Roger the Warrior got that uh, extra assistance. I gave that uh, her, ride did, her, her rider didn't lose his whip. So look for Roger the Warrior to be just about there at the finish as well. Picks up 5 kilos to go at 53 kilos. In the meantime, Stormacom picks up 2 kilos to go at 54 kilos. So an interesting rematch here between Roger the Warrior and Stormacom. Number 4, Jupiter Man scratched on last when deemed sick on the 6th of January. Back 2 weeks later now. On the morning's riding for Trader Howard Bailey. Look for Jupiter Man to earn a share here in the second event. Make it 6314, my order of preference. Sugar Daddy over Stormacom, Rose of the Warrior, and Jupiter Man. Race number three is next. We start the early pick five here. Minimum guarantee period is 250,000. We have 2,061,000 plus in the single in the bonus. And please note that mandatory period in the early pick five will be on Sunday, the 21st of January. So if you don't hit the jackpot on your lonesome on Saturday, look out for a big Single with a bonus automatically converted to a carryover to be paid out on Sunday. The third event is for 50 claimers. They go 1100 meters or five and a half furlongs. The purse 820,000. The feed of six. My best four includes two Wilson, three Regnant, four Soul Amia, and six. Just an illusion. Two, three, four, and six. And of that quartet, I prefer the pair 
of Wilson and Regnant. They look to be the better horses here. Wilson is going for fifth, his fifth win in six starts. So he has won four of his last five and actually has won three of his last three. So he's banging for him now. Robert Haldine rides for Trainer Leroy Thomason, also known as Johnny. Look for Wilson to possibly continue on winning ways. Regnant, also in good form, has won two of the last three outings and far speedier than Wilson. Regnant has six-time champion jockey Omar Walker riding for Henry Harrison Jr. Regnant should make the lead here and he'll be the one to catch. Number four, Soul Amia showed speed at last over seven furlongs when beaten by Zabertone. Look for Soul Amia to be prominent once again, though cutting back in distance to five and a half furlongs and running against some much quicker horses, the likes of Wilson and Regnant. Look for Soul Amia to earn a place in here. And Justin Illusion also has uh, some speed, but uh, had, did a run best running at 250, won twice at 250, now up to 550, was well beaten behind Dodgy Slink and Rosie Inan at 550 on last. So she'll have that much more running to do. Christopher Mandin, the 2019 champion writer Donovan Russell, more popularly known as Bobo, look for just an illusion to earn a share here in this small field of six. Three, two, four, six for me. Regnant over Wilson, Soul Amia. Just an illusion. Race four is next. It's a Rimsky Trophy. A field of seven will go 1200 meters or six for all. It's a restricted allowance two for native breath throws, none of 20 importies, throws not maidens. The purse 1.1 million. Twilight six starts here. 2.75 million in that. Minimum guaranteed payout. My best four in the field of seven includes one, Riches to Rags, three, Fun Can Done, five, Amazing Force, and seven, KD Strong. One, three, five, and seven. Riches to Rags, a debutant. She's a three-year-old chestnut filled by Union Rags out of the Pleasantly Perfect Dam. Plan de Vaux. Bred in the USA. Own Hamark Farm. Train Philip Fiano D. Dane Dawkins will be aboard. And Richard Sirags with a vibrant tongue tie fitted for the debut has worked fairly fluent in the morning, 38 flat alongside Amazing Force. Her stable mate went 38, 2 for 3 for long on the 6th of January with a half mile and 50 flat. So Richard Sirags has been timely prepared for her debut. Number 3, Fun Can Done. Also a debut on the 3 old bay coat by a Klimt out of the Empire Maker Dam. 50 Shades of Fun. Bird in the USA owned champion of the Carlton Walsh and trained champion trainer Jason Acosta Shamar Muir, also known as Paparazzi. He'll be aboard. Lasix to be administered for the first time for Fun Can Done. And Fun Can Done has looked very well at exercise. Went a minute, one for five straight on the 16th of December by 46, two for the half mile on the 23rd of December. Went 102, two by 47 flat on the 6th of January, five straight in the minute and a fifth by 47, two. And on the 13th of January, five and a half four in 107 flat. So this Fun Can Done has really looked well. In the mornings. Number five, Amazing Force. Another debutant, a three will be caught by Leo Frick out of the Crimson Guard Dam. White Wedding Day. Bred in the USA, own ACK stable train, Filipino D. Tevin Foster, the leading rider will be aboard. 57 kilos of weight here for Amazing Force, and he has worked well alongside stable mid Richie Sturak. They've both carried themselves quite fluent in the mornings. And with the appointment of the leading rider, Tevin Foster, aboard Amazing Force, and Dane Dawkins aboard Richie Sturak, I suspect that they'll both be ready to give off their best on debut. Number seven is KD Strong. All the rage on dance at Even Money, followed by all of ten and a half lengths Anonymous and Easy Peasy. Easy, Easy Peasy came back and won since. Anonymous came back and was a disappointing favorite. But KD Strong should be getting better. With each run has raced twice so far. Robert Haldin replaces Dane Dawkins. KD Strong could get much closer than that third by ten and a half lengths on last. I'm going to go one, five, three, and seven in the Rimsky Trophy. Riches to rags to get the better of Amazing Force. Then the big favorite, Fun Can Done. And KD Strong. Fifth event is next. We start the late pick five here. And remember that the early pick five will have a mandatory payout on Sunday. So one last chance to hit that jackpot between the two pick fives on Saturday. Race number five is a maiden condition race for native bed four wheels and up. They go a distance of 1,000 meters straight to five for long straight. The purse, 730,000. Of the field of nine, I prefer numbers three, four, five, and nine. Man Islam, Zane's Princess, Military Grade, and Xylophonic Seal. Military Grade, second by Lenton last to Crucial Alexia. That was his first sign of real ability. Now, Matthew Bennett picks up the mount from Marlon Brown, the captain, and Soldier Camp, Military Grade, having gone that close to victory last time out, gets the vote here. Zane's Princess, second to last by three and a quarter lengths, Eva Sunshine, over five for long straight. Back of the trade once again has second time Lasix to be administered and Dane Dawkins maintains the mount. Look for Zane's Princess to be in the thick of things from the word go. Number nine is Xylophonic Steel. Ran well in that same Zane's Princess event where Eva Sunshine won. Look for Xylophonic Steel from this outside post. Paul Francis riding for Kerry Tucker, aka Music Man, looking for his first win. Xylophonic Steel could very well deliver 
Number three is Manny Slam. Makes a belated debut. He's a four-year-old dark bear brown coat by a sensational slam out of the casual trick dam. Breezy. Adley. Bread. Valerie Marlowe owned Metrodon Racing Train. Patrick Lynch. George Samuda has been appointed to ride 57 kilos. Will be the top weight here for Manny Slam. And he could be anything. Has worked fluently. And he can manage this group. So Manny Slam. Going to look for market signals. And see what that one. What the stable confidence is like. In the chances of Manny Slam. He could be anything and it doesn't have to be much to beat this group. Make it 5493, my order of preference in race number 5. Military grade to get the better of Zane's Princess, Xylophonic Steel. Manny Slam. Race number 6 is next. We start the strike 4 here. And we have a field of 10. They go 1200 meters or 6 furlongs. It's for 250 clearers. Just before I get into the horses of interest for race number 6, we're going to take our mid-program break. Back to the program, you see Michael Kane taking the preview of the nine race card that we on show at Cape Anas Park on Saturday, the 20th of January, 2024. And please note, there are nine more races on Sunday, the 21st of January. So it's an 18 race, two day carnival of racing at Cape Manus Park. We are at race number six, which starts the strike four. Minimum guarantee period is 500,000. We have a single with a bonus of over 1.489 million. It's for the 250 Claremans. They go 1,200 meters or 6 furlongs. 10 horses will go posters. My best four. One, my Smokey. Seven, Heart of a Lion. Eight, Jamal James. And nine, Smart Tradition. One, seven, eight, and nine. The one they'll all have to catch is number one, my Smokey. Led for a long way in that 6 furlong contest on Boxing Day. Was beaten by Lion Talk within Shades of the Wire. So, my Smokey led for maybe five and a half furlongs or more. Jordan Bart maintains the bumper trainer, Donovan Plummer. Now among 250 claimers without a tag, my Smokey gets a far easier assignment here. And John Post won from a level break and not seen any speed to go with my Smokey. So my Smokey could well have an uncontested lead and that should see her being much more resolute up the lane against 250 claimers. Number 7, Heart of a Lion, got a bit closer on Nasser by 10 lengths behind Smokey's and Party Princess. That was among not earned 250 claimers. Now up. To open 250 claimers will have that much more to do, but Heart of Lion has some good back class and having shown an indication that he's running to useful form at last. Look for Heart of Lion to get a bit closer here. Shane Richardson chips off three kilos of the lottery, 57 kilo weight. It's going to be 54 kilos here for Heart of Lion. Heart of Lion should earn a share. Jamal James has been off target in his last couple of races. Fifth by 23 lengths behind Ali, fourth by 13 and three quarters just an illusion, but early in the season had some very good form. But has not been the soundest of racers. Chains Barnes, a few months ago, formerly trained by Gregor Forsyth. Gregor Forsyth got this one to go very well. Was extremely consistent. Winning or finishing second in maybe seven of his last ten outings. Or eight of his last, well, or six of his last ten outings when trained by Gregor Forsyth. So, we need a real Jamal James to come to the fore. And if he does, he can very well get the win here. Philip Parchment writes for trainer Michael Spencer, more popularly known as Mikey. Number nine, Smart Trade Edition, four by ten and a half lengths in that same smoke case, Party Princess, Heart of a Lion event. Dane Dawkins picks up the mount for trainer Adrian Prince, also known as Dan Dan. Look for Smart Trade Edition to be in the thick of things short. It was well better than that, made a nice mid mace roof. But that mid race move wasn't uh, followed through with, and Smart Trade Edition weakened to finish four by ten and a half lengths. Gonna go for number one, My Smokey, to smoke them from the word go and make all the running. Over number nine, Smart Trade Edition, then eight, Jamal James, and seven, Heart of a Lion. Race number seven is next. We have a field of nine. They go 1,200 meters or six for down the purse, 1 minute and 50,000. It's a maiden special event for native by three old fillies. Last triple start here, minimum guaranteed payout is 400,000. Of the field of nine, my best four includes three, Valley of Love, four, Lady Lauren, six, Rosetta, and eight, Tee Off. Three, four, six, and eight. That's where we go in race number seven. Number six, Rosetta, the one to beat, was a well-beaten tenth in the Jamaica 2 year stakes on Boxing Day. But prior to that, second by led behind Matuso over a mile. And prior to that, three stars back was second by ahead to Fast and Furious Links over six furlongs. So those two second place efforts are very encouraging indeed. Rain Lewis, the champion rider, picks up the mount for champion trainer Dave Costa and champion owner Carlton Watson. So the champions are in action with Rosetta in race number seven. Rosetta, my top choice. The horse they'll all have to beat. The main danger is going to be number eight, tee off. Was a leader for the first five furlongs in a seven furlong contest on debut that came on the 19th of November. Fourth in the end by three and a quarter events of Buttercup, Blue Sensation, and Matuso. Would have gained immensely from that debut. Now has second time lane six. Dane Dawkins replaces Robert Haldin in the saddle. 
The distance now reduced from 7 furlongs to 6 furlongs. And tee off has worked well. Half mile in 49 flat. On the 7th of January, tee off looks likely to be in front for a long way. And is going to be the one to catch. Number four, Lady Lauren was third by 11 and on debut to Interesting Times Ahead, who was a 10 winner. Interesting Times Ahead returned to win the Jamaica 2 year stake. So, good recommendation for the chances of Lady Lauren. She'll have first time Lasix administer Tevin Foster, the leading rider, picked up the monthly trainer Stephen Todd. We'll keep Lady Lauren on the right side. And Valley of Love, fought by 10 and a half lengths to a legend, Blue Sensation, and Old Machine at last. Look for another encouraging run here from Valley of Love. The blinkers have now been fitted by trader Philip Ellert, and Philip Parchment will be aboard. Make it 6843 in race number 7. Rosetta to get the better of tee off. Lady Lauren and Valley of Love. The 8th and penultimate event is next. We have 400,000 claimers. They go 1,000 meters around of 5 furlongs around a field of 10. Run for a purse of 790,000. My best four includes two, three card guy, four Manaco, six as a soup, and eight bad guy Riri. Two, four, six, and eight. Number two, three card guy has top weight Shamar Muir. With 57 kilos for Lydia Anglin, also known as Sharon. And this three-card guy has been fairly consistent recently. Third, two of the last three, fourth on the other occasion. So look for three-card guy to run another honest race here. Monaco number four, during the pattern riding for Turner Greg Fennell. This one has changed stable since we last saw him. And he should fit well among 400,000 claimers. Look for a good run here from Monaco. Asset suit number six, last time at 400,000. She was a five and three-quarter winner over both Sammy and Chinese music. That was on the 18th of November, written by Javani Patterson. It's now Samantha Fetcher in the saddle for trainer Anthony Dixon, more popular known as Bolo. And the last two appearances from Asa Soup have been at the 5 to the level. Was second by four and a half lengths to Wilson on the 10th of December. So look for Asa Soup to make it a very big effort here. Number eight, Bad Gal Riri, a big effort also expected from her. She steps down from 550 without a tag, down to 400,000 also without a tag. Tevin Foster, right, Howard, the guy, Tong Tai, has been refitted. And this Bad Gal Riri. Led for four furlongs and six furlong contest on last one by Dodger Sling over Rudd the Indian and one like it. Look for Bad Gallery from a level break to be right there from the word go and should be in a matchup for the lead with Asa Soup as they're both quite speedy indeed. Gonna go 8642 in the five round contest for race number eight. Bad Gallery to get the better of Asa Soup, Monaco, and three card guy. The ninth and final is next. We have a field of 10. It's restricted around 5 for native bred foils and up nuns of 2 and imported for the not maidens. They go a distance of 1,100 meters or 5 and a half furlongs. The purse is 750,000. My best four for race number 9 includes 1. Fly Blue Jet, 6. Kismet, 7. Dream Warrior, and 10. Pretty Crown, and 1, 6, 7, and 10. Fly Blue Jet, sorry by 4 and 3 quarter in the last over 5 furlong straight, ridden by Everton's Carrie Miller. It's now Rain Loose in the saddle. And last January, Rain Loose won aboard Fly Blue Jet, but Fly Blue Jet was disqualified and subsequent to that has not won a race, but has been finishing second, third, fourth, fifth, there, thereabouts, just not getting that win. Now, she comes back around the bend, and if my memory serves me right, the trip that she won was maybe five run or five and a half. So, Rain Loose back aboard for Filipiano D and Solomon Sharp. Solomon Sharp, of course, chairman. Super Inventors Racing and Entertainment Limited. I know that Chairman just loves to lead in his charges when they win, so Fly Blue Jet could very well give him an opportunity of doing so. Next horse of interest is going to be number six, Kismet, second and last at 75 to 1, beat by Speedy here over five furlong straight on the 13th of January, and that was a big run at a big price by Kismet. Back here now, coming around the bend, Dane Dawkins. He picks up Maud replacing Jordan Bart. Look for Kismet. To be banned contention from the world go. Dream Warrior was second and last by a length and a half when running on after being slow into stride, beaten by California Gold. It's now back here. Romar Spencer, also known as Turtleback Right to Trainer Norman Smith. Look for Dream Warrior to be in the thick of things from a better break. And number 10, Pretty Caroline, a notable change of rider. It's now Matthew Bennett that replaces George Samuda, Prince Holder, who have been aboard Pretty Caroline. For her last three outings. So Pretty Caroline should definitely get a bit closer here. Especially if she gets a good break. Usually she's slow to stride. So she has a tardiness at the start. And if she gets a tardiness behind her for this assignment, she could very well get a job done. Patrick Lynch, the trainer, Solomon Sharp, the owner, and this is our chairman at Supreme Ventures Racing and Entertainment Limited. He has two entries here. Fly Blue Jet. 
and Pretty Caroline. Can they run the Exacta and the Quinella? <laughs> that would be even better. Let's see how a race to Manan will unfold. I like one. Fly Blue Jet to get the better of six. Kismet, then ten. Pretty Caroline and seven. Dream Warrior. Haven't heard from Dr. Porter as yet or my groom Marshall from Purple Island, but we hope to hear from them before first post on Saturday. First post, of course, is high noon. And right here on Kingdom Lifestyle and Sports, KLA Sports Radio, your number one horse racing radio station in the Western Hemisphere, we'll have live racing from the Great Race Race, Caymanus Park. I'm your stylist, Michael Kane, on behalf of our student engineer, Richard Cat Anderson, also known as DG Cat, until this time for live racing from the park. Goodbye for now.